How's it going guys? I'm Chris Forsberg and I'm Ryan Turk and this is Drift Garage Response. All right, first question from Shamar Baker. Hey Chris, do you think you would perform differently if you were to swap cars with Turk in Formula D? If so, what does Turk's car have that yours doesn't or vice versa? Well, that's hard to say because everyone's car is built for the driver specifically. See, my car, I really enjoy. I've driven a lot of different cars and I feel that mine is the best car that I've ever driven, especially being that it's catered to me. For Turk, he really prefers the way that his car is set up as far as you know the steering angle, the amount of rear traction that the car has, the amount of power that it has, the anti-lag system. And not to say that one driver will perform better or worse, but it's just to say that that is the way that he likes his car to be set up. And I like my V8 with the nitrous system that we have. The car performs very well. I really like the way that the 370Z steers and the way that the rear end works. And to be honest, I'm quite surprised that there are not more 370Zs in Formula Drift. Next question is from Jeff G2. Ryan, what do you think about the RB20 DET swap for the 240SX? I think it's a pretty decent engine. Um, you know, inline six, but small displacement. Um, it's just a little bit of a, a waste, I think. Uh, if you're gonna go RB, why wouldn't you go RB25 or RB26 and just save yourself the time, give yourself more displacement. Um, and potential for a lot more horsepower that's e more easily achieved than having a small liter in line six cylinder. Um, that's just how I feel about it. I haven't run an RB20 or an RB25 or an RB26 on big power, so I'm not sure how it would be. Um, but that's just uh, how I would go about things. I would definitely get a bigger displacement engine since they're available. All right, next question we have from Young, and he asks, of all the episodes you've made so far, which one was the most fun to make? Now that's a tough question because we've obviously done a ton of episodes and we have a great time on every season, but I would say that probably the first season with the 240SX might have been the most fun because it was very new to us. We didn't even know what we were getting ourselves into and the fact that that thing was just like a big pile of crap and we are just beating on it with hammers and kicking and screaming and laughing the whole time. It was really fun and uh, I think you'll be seeing a little more of that style video coming up next. Next question from Slater Creamer. You asked, if you could buy any car in the world, what would that car be? That is an extremely difficult question for me to answer. Uh, I haven't really driven too many um, exotic cars like Ferraris or Lamborghinis or anything like that, but I don't think I would really go that route per se um, as far as a road legal car or a daily driver kind of, kind of style car like that. I think I would... Um, more or less choose a racing, like a race car, so, uh, like a Le Mans Porsche or something that is just uh, super rad and, and different from doing what I'm doing right now since I already have you know some pro professional drift cars. I think uh, having a professional uh, insane road race car would be uh, the perfect match for me. The next question is from Mabusa who asks, what spring rates and struts are you running in the Datsun? <clears throat> well, I just recently upgraded the Datsun to the full Technoid Toy Tuning Kit who is one of the only companies that makes a bolt-in coilover upgrade for the Datsun. And the spring rates are actually pretty soft. They're in the 250 pound range. And I actually will probably bump that up a little bit, being that I'm gonna be seeing a little more track time and a little less street with that car. And so with that, it has adjustable shocks too, so I can also dial the shocks up when I hit the track and soften them up for the street. June Howe asks, do you run carbon ceramic brakes on your street cars and your FD cars? Do they have any advantages over normal brakes on any on day-to-day -day driving? Loving the episodes. Thank you. Um, I actually don't have any experience with uh, carbon ceramic brakes. No, I don't run them on a street car or the pro car. In drifting, you're not really, it's not road racing. You're not, you're not diving in at the last minute into a corner and stomping on the brakes as hard as you can to try to stop in, uh, in, in time to make the apex. In drifting, you are, you know, just doing a little bit of left foot braking throughout the runs and uh, on the transition, if you're right up in somebody's door, you're just stabbing the brakes a little bit just to um, make sure you're not going to take the guy's rear bumper off when you're chasing them. So, uh, in drifting, I think having a, a, a different brake setup is more or less to save weight on the car. It's not really for any, uh, you know, there's no massive advantage to having a, a big brake hit in drifting. Alright, next question is from Coney Engberg who asks, how much slash how many spare parts do you usually bring to an event or a day at the track? 
And what's the most common thing that you break at the track? Well, see, there's a big difference in going to a regular track day and going to Formula Drift. See, our Formula Drift rig is packed with every single spare part to rebuild our car no matter what happens. We have spare engine, transmission, clutches, differentials, axles, every suspension component, and even some extra body panels to make sure our car is running 100% for competition until we are knocked out or win the event. As far as a regular track day, I'll usually bring a set of spare axles for my 240SX, a couple suspension arms, some tow rods, some tie rods for the front, and you know sometimes a spare transmission if I got the room, but you know usually just the, uh, the bare essentials that get kind of banged up on those cars. And if I'm going to do like say a demonstration, I also will bring a little extra drivetrain to make sure that if I break anything, I can get that car back up and running so I can finish my show. Andrew James asks, do you think an American powertrain swapped into an import car would be cool? If so, what do you think would be a cool setup? Dude, I mean, it's, it's hap everybody's done it. It's already happened so many times. There's so much information out there to do and, and, and uh, find out about. There's so many different V8 swaps and different American engine swaps to do. So it's really hard to, you know, tell you what would be the best one or, you know, what would satisfy you the most. That's, for, that's up to you to decide. Uh, you know, one of the most, the, the biggest go-to engines is going to be the LS series of uh, Chevy engines and, you know, a lot of people have, f make phenomenal power on those, have killer reliability and I have a blast. There's so much torque on those things. It's, uh, it's, they're super fun to drive. They don't make the same noises that I like, but uh, with turbo cars and anti-lag and all that, but, um, you know, super blast. Just do some research and figure out what you think is going to be best for you and make a decision. Go for it. All right, next question is from Sideways NZ. What is your favorite car related movie or a movie that has a car that has at least some significance? Well, see, it's tough for me because there's a lot of new movies out. Obviously, the Fast and Furious series was a huge part of, you know, not only myself and also the whole import scene, uh, getting the actual name of drifting and also just the import scene on the map and a household name. But you know, when I really like to look at, you know, what movies inspire me and, and also made me really like cars at a younger age, I like to look at movies like Vanishing Point, Bullet, and like Two Lane Blacktop. Those classics that are just, just raw car driving, racing, and it's, you know, not as much of a, you know, about the story and, and all those other things going on that the movies nowadays have, but just straight up awesome driving. That is it for this week's Drift Response. Thank you everybody for watching Drift Garage. Keep your comments coming. We're always going to pick the best ones to answer every other Wednesday. And make sure you stay tuned to Network A for Drift Garage coming out next Tuesday.